last episodes, we discussed how much the human brain performs like a muscle. It uses feedback to constantly adapt to new challenges. Every time it performs a challenging task, it gets better and better. In a second, a more conscious system, we are reviewing what did work and what did not work. Was it easy? Was it difficult? Is there an easier path to proceed? When those both systems work together in the brain of a learner, it may end good or bad. And it all depends on your mindset. If you assume that your brain is like a muscle that gets stronger when it's used, you assume that your intelligence can grow. You embrace challenges because effort makes you smarter and effort is the key to acquire a new skill. And when something does not work, this is a special chance to get a lot better. You stand up and try again. This is what the psychologist Carol Dweck calls a growth mindset. You are not born with a growth mindset. And you are not in a growth mindset all of the day. But the very instance you put yourself into a growth mindset, a lot of things change fundamentally. On the other hand, if you assume that your intelligence is static and that you are born with what you have, you change in the opposite direction. You put yourself in a fixed mindset. You try to avoid challenges because someone could see that you are actually not so smart. It is better to always look smart, to avoid being caught. If you see an obstacle, you say yourself, mm, let it be. Since you think that your intelligence is fixed, you think putting in more effort is fruitless. Better pretend to be cool and give up before somebody else notices that you are not just smart enough. Does that sound like yourself? <laughs> Don't worry. Carol Dweck and her colleagues gave 6,500 learners two simple online sessions about how the brain works. Just 25 minutes in each lesson. In the following school term, it was in the ninth grade, the average grades of the test group were 0.2 standard deviations better than in the control group without this treatment. And this simple treatment reduced the risk of failing the school year by 11%. Even more, the amount of students that later enrolled for demanding math courses was 3% higher than in the control group. For this little effort, that is a big effect. So why not have everybody the online course and we are done. Carol Dweck's national study in 65 different schools revealed another important phenomenon. The environment, the school, has to support the growth mindset or it won't work. Think about this. If you have a growth mindset, you get inspired by people who do something better than you can do it. Because, obviously, you can learn a lot from these people and get smarter by working together with them. If you have a fixed mindset, smarter people are frightening. They can do anything better and you can never cope with them. So, better remove them from your place by mobbing or by gossip before they challenge your social position or take over your job. If you put yourself in a growth mindset, you are grateful for feedback. Somebody offers time and shows you where you are good at and where you can grow better. If you are in a fixed mindset, feedback is a verbal attack. Somebody is threatening you because of your limited abilities and you have to counterattack before you get crushed. So, assuming a fixed versus a growth mindset has a huge impact on social dynamics. Now think twice how in some classes smart kids are bogged down and 
insulated. What you as teacher can do against this. The educational technologist Jason Wong sees a growth mindset as fundamental to develop social responsibility and a global vision for the problems of the 21st century. Why should we reduce carbon emission? The Chinese or the American economy could overtake us and take our jobs. But if you have a growth mindset, you would use creativity and analytical thinking to find another way. You would want to develop a solution to decouple the economy from carbon emission while maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And you would readily accept that you need to acquire skills in science, in math and engineering to accept this challenge. You can do this and save the planet on the way. We recommend our Vygotskyan style of teaching to develop growth mindset as a culture in your class. Vygotsky is a social constructivist. Two concepts are crucial to understand Vygotsky. First, the concept of the more knowledgeable other, MKO. In our example, this more knowledgeable other is the mother of the kids. It could as well be their teacher, another kid, or even a computer. The more knowledgeable other knows slightly more than you do and guides you out of your comfort zone into your zone of proximal development. This zone of proximal development is the second important concept of Vygotsky. This is a zone where you can expand your skills if you have a more knowledgeable other that supports you and if you believe that your skills can grow. Obviously, if you have a growth mindset, you can take visibly more profit from the more knowledgeable other because he is not a threat, he is a guidance. On the other hand, the more knowledgeable other should learn a practice to support you. This practice is what we call scaffolding. You do your first steps and you do not drop to the ground because your more knowledgeable other provides a scaffold for you. He or she guides you. The MKO could show you some things, could give you feedback and provide a feeling of security. If you do your steps alone, the more knowledgeable other will gradually let you go and will gradually put down the scaffold. In this video, you see the M-Tiny robots. Two four-year-old preschoolers are tasked to program the robots with the programming cards you see in front of them. Her mother has told a story how the little robots found a cake and how the little robot decides to bring it to their birthday party. The kids program the robots to perform this story. In this example, the boy has decided on his own to deviate from the story. He is clearly in his zone of proximal development and has already broken his scaffold. By inserting four steps forward, his robot overruns the stop and crashes into his little sister. How would you handle this? On the one hand, this was not the plan. On the other hand, it was not even known that this preschooler can count to four. Now he has used his skills to make up a prediction where the robot will end up. I would first discuss his newly acquired skills in counting, programming and modeling of physics. This clearly puts him into a growth mindset. Later, perhaps at the evaluation stage of our 5e cycle, I would openly discuss if everybody is fine with having robots run into people. But this is higher order thinking. Since the tools are intrinsically safe, it is safe to put creativity first and, by the way, explore the ethical concerns of modern technology by practice. In a later stage, you would focus on critical thinking, on evaluation, ethics and policy making. All of these are 21st century skills and deserve a focus on its own. Carol Dweck provided a growth mindset scale that you can provide to your students, right from Stanford Spark Tools to test their growth mindset. The link is in the comment section of this video. This is only a three item scale. Learners can score them in less than three minutes. It's tested with children and teenagers. There's less research with adults. Students should be able to read 
as expected by six to eight graders to perform the scales.